Good morning guys and welcome back to Damo Drives and welcome to this beautiful Aladdin's cave down here at HBC Classics. There are so many wonderful cars in here, I don't know which way to look. To me though, the 1970s, 1960s were some of the best looking cars ever made. And today we've got this BMW from 1974, the 3 litre CSI. Now, it's a special car anyway, but this is particularly different. It's not a normal 3 litre CSI, it's a resto mod, so it's had 120,000 pounds spent on this to strip it back to basics, completely repaint it, the interior, it's got a different engine, it's got upgraded parts on it. It is a truly stunning car, the looks are amazing, and I'm just excited by this. To be honest, the car next to it as well, uh, this Alfa Romeo GTA R, that's also a very special car. Maybe that can be driven at some other point, but we're gonna go and get the keys. We're also gonna get Miles, who's the sales director down here at HPC Classics, because he's an encyclopedia of car knowledge, and we'll go out for a drive, have a chat about it. I'm really looking forward to this. The weather's not looking great, but it shouldn't dampen my feeling about this car. The car is a 1974 3 litre CSI. Oh, now, this is something I got wrong. Now, CS in modern terms is uh, club, club sport. sport, yes. But it's not, is it, in this term? It's not a club sport, no. CS was coupe sport, and there were various different types. So. You had a 2800, which was uh, like an early car. They had the 3 litre like this, uh, all carbs, and then they had the CSI, which is the injection model, um, which this originally was, or still is technically. <laughs> um, and then you had the CSL, Lischgewicht, which was the lightweight variant with aluminium panels um, and options of the Batmobile kit, which uh, weren't fitted from the factory in the UK, um, they were they were an option to fit and uh, I mean why you'd not fit the Batmobile kit I have no idea because they are the best of the best, wonderful things. This car has had a lot of TLC so this has had over £120,000 spent on it to make it about as good an E9 as you could get, I mean as you can see by that it's, it's dead flat, it's dead easy to drive, super powerful. Oh it's lovely. Um, it's just delightful. It is in a different league to any other 70s car because of the money that's been spent on it. So every single bit of the car has been fettled. Um, so the body's been, you know, fully restored, uh, obviously repainted. It was originally Fjord Blue, which is a light blue for those of you that don't know, uh, metallic. And that is now Nacht Blue, which is light blue, dark blue, which is non-metallic, but was a colour that was available at the time. Um, was a power steering, that like, car had power steering originally. Um, the Nardi wheel obviously finishes things That's off lovely. for a proper driver's car. Um, but everything has been upgraded. So we've got a, a cylinder M30 engine, which I like because it's got some originality to it, but it's not the original engine. It's a 3.4, 3.5 from a 635 CSI, so a later car. Um, so naturally, a tad more punchy than the standard car would have had anyway. Um, and a bit more talky. It's the but joy then, of a resto mod, isn't it? You've got the best bits from when it was made and all the better bits as it gets further on down. Exactly. So, I mean, I love the fact they kept an M30. If I was going to do this car myself, I think I would do exactly the same. So, it looks right under the bonnet. But then it's mated to triple Gemby throttle bodies and an Emerald ECU with a switchable map on it. Um, so, uh, Shrek cams. Or sorry, trick cam, sorry, single overhead cam, the M30. Um, lightweight flywheel, five speed box, uprated 40% locking diff. Um, so, not only does it have a lot more punch, it's um, a lot more willing to rev, and it also wants to put it down. So, we've got a custom manifold, we've got custom exhaust, um, all stainless. Everything about it is, is pure perfection. Uh, the suspension. Oh, it is. It's also been upgraded, the brakes Quiet have been rebuilt. when we want it to be. It's handling the bumps, no problem. I think that's the size of the, the profile of the tyre. It's only yeah. this elastic band 
thing going on. It's using the tyre for what it's meant for. But yeah, I mean, they were a great refined car anyway. These were, well, better built than anything else that was around at the time. Um, not only are they beautiful, but I think they're actually, I mean, there's loads of space, it's comfortable, it's a normal seating position. So you could cover you know, hundreds of miles. The idea is you take this on a nice continental cruise. Um, I would like to think if you're going to do a European road trip, this is the perfect car for it. I mean, being left-hand drive as well, it is just, it just made for it. Get over to the continent and go and bash some miles out. Oh, it'd be amazing. Every last little bit was given TLC, so the bottom end had whatever it needed to make sure it was perfect. Um, and then the, the top end was also, yeah, with the upgraded cam, was ported and polished as well. So it really is a proper thing. No expense spared. New seals throughout the car. And then the interior where we are sat is what a place. It's amazing, the attention to detail. So who did the interior on this? So SM Trimming, um, local guys, people that we use, but also probably the best in the world. Um, they are phenomenal. Scott, I don't know, he just, he sees things the way I think us proper car enthusiasts see things. So everything works, even though you're working against all the digital stuff. Everything works exactly as it should. Recalibrated, the re, you know, the rebuilt behind them. Um, you've got an up, up, up to date stereo fitted. Yep, great. So you can Bluetooth it and you've got USB charging and auxiliary ports and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's really for long distance road trips and, and modern driving, modern drivers. But also the quality of the finish and the leather that's been used is just to die for. It um, is, and the reef as well, the fact yeah, that it's all done everywhere. Full else. leather headlining. I mean, but the, the quality of the leather on the seats is better than anything I've ever sat on in any car. Um, we, we've yet to have anything through the shop that's anywhere near as good as this. Um, it's, it's delightful. And Scott, you can be very proud of this. But yeah, leather foot mat for the driver. Um, again, matching um, with fresh carpets throughout. Even the boot um, has been done, and it is carpeted. Uh, underneath the carpet, there is full leather throughout the entire boot. Battery box, custom made. Um, it, it's unbelievable. So, I mean, the interior has got to have been 20, 25,000 pounds per zone. The detail, you know, even just the the cigarette um, ashtrays, even been redone. Really got leather in there. It's... This is. I'd be scared about using them. Not that I smoke, but. I... <laughs> but it's, it's just too nice. Done that even, the, even the side pockets redone. They didn't just put the original ones back on. It's so quick. The amount of torque it delivers in the mid range. I was quite surprised, you know, obviously. I <laughs> find out in a bit, you know, being this side, um, it does feel punchy. It makes quite a nice noise. Yeah, the Gemini throttle body is a lovely, throaty, gravelly sound to them, which you wouldn't get from a normal M30. Um, so. It brings out, it really does bring out the best in, in the whole car really. Um, again, spec of gearbox, spec of diff, everything's just right. Yeah, five um, speed manual, so that's... Yeah, ideal for cruising and also will get you up to speed a bit quicker than you know the standard four. Um, yeah, no, you wouldn't change anything. Again, steering weight, steering wheel size. Wonderful sound. Super mechanical. Sounds amazing. And it, I mean, it's not slow, is it? No, not at all. Really, really quick car. It's lovely in here. It's lovely on the outside. It's got so much thought, you don't need to rev it, so you can keep it super refined and just tickle the throttle. I think, was it one of the first with the kidney grills and you've got the Wilhelm Hofmeister? So yeah, got the, the Hofmeister, Hofmeister King. King like yeah. A, I think this was. Revolution was really the next generation of BMW, didn't it? The, the styling this, and everything. This is where most of BMW's design language comes from, you know. The, the I, honestly, I don't think they've ever done anything better. Um, 507 is beautiful, the Baroque Angel. Um, I mean, yes, I love an M1 Pro car. You know, an E31 8 series is a, another design marvel, but for pure classic class, most people would look at this and not think that it's a BMW. They didn't know their cars. Who made that, you know? Yeah. Um, body by Carmen, which is, is, you know, quite something in itself. It's the reason the quality, the 
build quality is that. I mean, BMW were good, but Carl Knight said it that much better. Yeah, I mean, they, 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 they still built the early E24s on the E12 platform, and to be fair, um, they didn't last very long. Uh -huh. um, they're very rare, yeah. So, um, again, arguably one of the best looking cars we've probably have ever made. The way it handles, it just doesn't, just want to roll. It's so well set up. I mean, the suspension on this car, not only is it sublime, you know, it's so smooth, but they've, in order to get it looking and riding just right, the standard suspension springs you can buy off the shelf didn't make the owner happy. Because there was a slight amount oh, of rake. Really? Yeah, there was a slight amount of rake to the car. So, Jeff, um, who put the, uh, the owner on to us or recommended us to sell the car for uh, the owner, um, at Taylor Automotive, absolutely fabulous guy. Same with Scott, actually they're in units next to each other. So Jeff had done all the tweaks, he's set up the, um, the engine and um, you know, gone through the, the finer details, shall we say, of the car. Um, and yeah, Jeff actually had custom springs made so that the car sat perfectly level oh, and really? road handled. Yeah. That level of that attention level. to detail. And, and that's why it's so good. You know, it's very easy to buy a load of parts off the shelf and, and put a car together. Yes, it's still blooming expensive, don't get me wrong. But going to that level, I mean, there, there are a lot of new cars that aren't this well refined, they're not as smooth to drive. Um, I mean, the brakes are just light and easy um, and loads of power. Again, these were four pot up front, twins at the rear from the factory. So the, the car will stop very well. I'm really excited for you to drive it, yeah, see what you well. think. Um, but it's, I mean, having owned uh, an E3 myself, an E9 was always the car I wanted to own. This is, this is what I wanted this the most. Is where, this, where, yeah. this is what I wanted the most. And I didn't want to be disappointed, because I've heard stories that the E3 drives better, the saloon car's actually better balanced. And I think that could well be, could well be correct if you had just a standard car. But this is sublime. So it's just getting used to, like you said, being on the road side of the road. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's nice having the brakes. Are good feeling brakes. Aren't they? Yeah. yeah, they're so good for a car of its age. Oh again, yeah, I was not expecting it to be. No. Like that. Let's just get around here, make sure I'm not sitting in the middle of the road. Like you said, is uh, quite easy to do. Easily so. done. Yeah. Yeah. Left hand drive. That's lovely. We'll have to get over yeah. a little bit. Yeah, it's, it really is quite something, isn't it? You know, that, I don't know obviously what the original engine would have been like, but this is just... I mean, they still do sound nice, but obviously it's rather muted through the, uh, the standard induction system. Generally, throttle bodies are always, or anything on throttle bodies is, is always lovely. You can hear a lot more induction roar. So again, you can you can hear the induction a lot more than you can hear the exhaust, yeah. which is nice. Um, and the old Alphas always used to be that way anyway. Oh. Um, but it's nice to hear it from other cars too. Is it, the interesting thing when we spoke about this, the fact that the CSL being lightweight, the fact they got rid of sound deadening, they got rid of, um, what else did they get rid of? Electric windows, yeah, other than and, the and UK cars, things, yeah. yeah. But then the UK, they went, nope, we're going to fit the city pack, which then got rid of all of the cool styling that you got on the CSL. It added the sound deadening back. Yeah, and it, electric windows, the electric which windows. added weight, yeah. So it was, I, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'll be shot down in the comments that I don't understand why you'd buy a CSL like that because. Um, what does it offer? Do you want me to press that for you? Yeah, other, <laughs> than, other than being more expensive. Um, I mean, you've still got lighter panels. You've got the name, of course. Um, there were a few other differences, you know, air dam wheels. Um, they did make some changes. That's seriously windy. Um, so. but there, there can't be a lot. I mean, is it worth that extra money? Like, so this is up for how much? 89.995. 89.995, yeah. 
Um, so if you wanted a CSL version of this, what do you reckon, another you're at 40 one, grand on top of that? Yeah, you're at like 120 start price for a CSL nowadays. Um, really, really good. I mean, a, a car restored to this level, you are, yeah, you're in the 200s now. Um, people are asking 200K for them. And to my mind, you, sh you should be getting that as well. They are, they're super rare. They're very, very special. Obviously, uh, in the UK, they supplied the Batmobile kit in the boot. Uh, they weren't actually fitted. So there are some UK cars out there that do have the Batmobile kit fitted. They, again, command a premium these days. Um, but cars that haven't really seen the light of day, they're going to auction, and as long as they have history and they can prove that it was an original CSL, um, some of them are, are out there at like 140, 150K now. Um, without being restored or having had TLCs get back on the road. That is a lot of money. So, but I think they're worth it. When you look you at the price, of, oh yeah. When you look at the price of other things out there, your other options won't, you know, they won't be as rare. They won't be as good to drive. I mean, just the driving position of an E9 and the way they feel, it just has some perfection about it. So would you rather then have this or for another 50 grand, having maybe have not a great condition CSL then? Um, I, I mean, I'm not in a position to own either, which is unfortunate, <laughs> otherwise I would own both. Yeah. Um, it's a tricky one. If you can afford a CSL, you probably would have a CSL, um, because the likelihood is you can afford to actually get it restored or yeah. get it to a nice drivable state. Um, however, if you were really pushing the boat out to afford either, um, this would be the sensible money because it is, for all intents and purposes, perfect, really. Yeah, for me, I, I prefer, I love this. I do like the styling though, of the CSL when you have got the more aero and the big wing and all of the shouty bits. Yeah, well, I'm basically a child, so I would definitely take the CSL with the Batmobile kit because it is, I mean, that's what dreams are made of, isn't it? You yeah. know, um, big wings, all that kind of stuff. It's exactly what you're after. Um, so you almost want this though with the CSL body kit on it. Would be very nice, yeah. <laughs> um, and it's so refined. This, this is lovely, this is better than I thought. You know, I've driven some sort of semi older ones, but this is... It doesn't feel like an old car at no, all, does it? I mean, not at all. The injection system obviously would have meant that it, they drive nicely anyhow, but all the upgrades this has had, I mean, it, turns into a modern car almost, but you haven't lost any of that soul. You know, the M30 engine, as I say, I'm, I'm a huge fan. I've had so many cars with M30 engines. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. They're so reliable. Single overhead cam. Um, you know, say the bottom ends are literally built like tanks. You, you'd have to do something really special to harm one, really. Um, and as long as they're well looked after and, and, you know, lubricated and maintained. I mean, I've never had a problem with one. My 635 CSI, I daily for some time. Um, I've had seven series, the seven five the series. Yeah, so the M30 was used in tons and tons of cars. Oh, okay. um, and obviously the, I had the E3 2800, it's another M30 engine. Obviously different iterations of that yeah. engine. Um, but yeah, they are so well behaved. Um, well this is, you know, we're pottering because there's a learner out there and the weather's terrible, but it's lovely just chatting about the car, learning about it. It's just so relaxed. And there's tons of talk as well. Yeah. For, you know, for an engine of those, its years, you don't need to be shifting every no. five seconds in order to be in the right gear. You know, it is, it is just easy driving. The steering is, well, surprisingly comfortable as well. I say their steering position is, I don't know, they feel, you get in an E9, it just feels right. Uh, the first time I ever sat in one was in uh, CSL, and it was a right-hand drive car. And you know when things just feel right. One day, yeah, I'm going to have one of these, like a hundred percent. It's one of those cars, isn't it, where you're going to park it in the car park and turn around and look back and go, "That's my car." Yeah. And you, oh. kn you know you're happy when that. Yeah. When it comes to that, and you turn around and go. Yeah, that's mine. It's always going to be the most beautiful thing in the car park yeah. as well. Um, difficult choice between something like this and an Alpha 105. You know, which one would you go for and why would you choose it? But 
I think there's an overall car. I prefer this. I think the Alpha's prettier. Yeah, I think the Alpha's more of a B-Road Blast kind of car, track day car. Um, because they are that little bit lighter, yeah. you know, shorter wheelbase, and a little bit more planted, especially once they've had the upgrades. Um, they're, they're more of a, a stiff, solid ride. Whereas this is a do-it-all car. You know, it's got a bit more torque, so it pick, picks up a bit easier, depending on, you know, you're not worried about which gear you're in. So the ride comfort quality and the, the extra space within the interior, um, yeah, it makes it a little bit more usable too. You've got bigger boot. They're both beautiful. Um, I mean, the other thing that really attracts me to this car is there are hardly any E9 resto mods. No? Nope. They're pretty much all original. Yeah, a lot of them have had upgrades here, there and everywhere. And, there are a few that I know one guy in America has done um, an E39 chassis engine, you know, full, full running gear, and then put the E9 body on top. Oh, really? So Ooh. it's very spicy, but with a V8. And, you know, it doesn't have the original wheels and things like that. So it's, to me, it's, it's just not that nice. It's a bit OTT. And there's it, no. It looks a bit max power. Is there any companies that do this? You know, just as a light, you've got alcoholics with. I'm not sure there are. Um, BMW wise, not not the, to my attention. I wouldn't be as, at all surprised if there were some hidden over in America somewhere. Um, but yeah, I've, I'm yet to come across any. And again, to build it to this level really is quite something. So you need to buy a bad, you know, poor conditioned one of these, and then spend 120,000. It, These guys specifically it. bought a decent one to begin with as well. Oh, so they bought a decent one and then spent 120,000. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it is. It's an impressive car, um, and all the time, attention, and you know, detail in it does definitely show. So there we go. Overall, it's just bloody brilliant. I suppose sums it <laughs> up. Doesn't it being being shorter, pretty and bloody brilliant. Yeah, it is absolutely brilliant. Like you can't mark it down at any point. It's just too good. Yeah. So we're going to go on that. We're going on that bombshell, as to put it as a bit top gear. Well, it's completely top gear, but never mind. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. Comments are always welcome. And remember to click on the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.